Okay, everybody. Welcome back to Manchester. It's been a few days over the Christmas breaks. I hope you've enjoyed all the ho-ho-ho, all the prezies, all the joyful children. And uh, we're here at House of Fraser. It's the end. It's the absolute end of the department store. And never have I seen such a perfect contrast as the one we see right here. Okay, it's the view along Dean's Gate, probably the busiest uh, kind of party and uh, retail uh, place in Manchester, in the city centre. One of the busiest, shall I say. And uh, everything is closed. Everything is still closed. Fair enough, it's early. But uh, it's a normal working day. It's uh, Wednesday, the 29th of December. It's not a bank holiday. It's not a Boxing Day, it's not a New Year's Eve, it's not even a New Year's Day. And I've seen maybe seven people since I got here. Okay guys, welcome to the arcade, a nice Victorian structure. This is when glass became cheap in the mid 1800s. Uh, they started using glass for a lot more. Very reminiscent of Alexandra Palace, uh, Kew Gardens, the Botanics in, in London. And uh, again, you can just feel the optimism. The Jules Vernian, the Phileas Fogg, the Victorian gentleman. You can just feel the optimism for the future. A belief in industry, a belief in uh, travel, education, queen and country, or god and country. No, it would have been queen and country, of course, Victorian. Duh, Charlie. <laughs> well, there you go. Do you guys remember that time? It was like, they're like, yeah, China, like, it's like, oh, 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 and they're like, Two weeks, man. Just, just two weeks. We'll, we'll flatten it. We'll get your kids back in school. No, no, no lockdown. Just two weeks to flatten the curve. It'll be absolutely fine. You get your jibby jabby. Vaccine Mac Fry. Vaccine Mac Fry. Arbeit Mac Fry. Doors of Treblinka. Damn. Here's a HSBC taking the uh, Manchester B insectoid slave serve the Queen. You are a drone propaganda to its uh, natural conclusion where we're literally just showing beehives. There you go, beehive. All right, well, uh, I reckon I had a River Delta. I had a Nile Delta followed by Optimus Prime variant in quick succession, maybe between six to eight weeks apart. Kind of like a standard winter, really. <coughs> All righty, we're back on Market Street heading up towards Cracky Gardens, the Cracky Triangle, also known as Piccadilly Gardens. Well, the, uh, oh God, copyrighted music, let's run. Um, all the Christmas markets are gone. There's queues, queues for public services again. No, public, queues for the bank. Hey, Merry Christmas, man, how are you? Yeah, yeah, sorry? Very good one. Very good one, it's my first day back out since uh, Christmas Eve, yeah. Fresh things. Fresh things, I'll go. Yeah, man, take it easy, all the best. See you, dude. So yeah, as I was saying, uh, most of the Christmas things are gone. Totally gone. As you can see, a clear Market Street. Look at that. Okay, I've just missed the shot, but the group of uh, young uh, Middle Eastern men have just been uh, told to put their face masks on. Can't believe it's uh, still strict when I believe politically, politically this pandemic is over. Uh, dude, you need to go to hospital and not come up to people like me swearing, making threats. You need to go to hospital. You don't look well. Are going to put it on social media? Um, yes, YouTube. Yeah, you dirty piece of shit. Um, That's a spam for you. Dude, I've, I've, you came up to me asking for a... I said, I don't, but I said, I recommended you go and get some medical treatment. And you Correct, told me to... That's what you've done. I sat in the hospital for nine hours yesterday. Well, dude, okay, well, some more advice. Sort your life out. I don't want no more advice off you. Sort your life out. You Stop, getting Stop getting into fights. Stop getting into fights. I want you to fuck up. I fell. I was supposed to fight. I fell. Uh, fight, judging by your aggressive demeanor, it's probably a fight. Go on, fuck up. All right, dude. Merry Christmas. <laughs> okay, it's always good to tell you what happened off camera. I wasn't filming. I was walking along the top of Piccadilly Gardens, and you excuse me, excuse me, can you help me? And I said, I'm sorry, I, I can't give you any money. Um, and he goes, No, 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 I'm not after money. I'm after a cigarette. And I'm just looking at him, and he's all cut up and bleeding. 
And I said, dude, I don't think you need a cigarette. You need to go phone an ambulance, get yourself to hospital, get some medical treatment. And then he kind of looks down. He kind of looks at me, he goes, you know what you can do? You can go fuck off. And I start filming. I know uh, we still have New Year to come in a couple of days, but the feeling in uh, central Manchester is uh, desolation, sogginess, wet, return to work, it's all over, last days of disco, and uh, yeah, I guess a dark grey sky, cold windy weather, and uh, drizzle does make everything a bit shit. God, even the posters of, uh, you know, super famous people just look depressing. Look at them. Uh, 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 355, yay, let's go watch it. Okay, the Middleton bus is a very fetching pink at the front and blue at the rear. Okay, guys, we're about to look up. They've uh, put a bunch of scaffolding up to cover up a brick wall and they put a poster over it to make it absolutely meta. It's a poster of a brick wall so that you don't see the brick wall behind the, the fake brick wall. It's kind of like the new Matrix movie. Exact same concept. If you've seen this brick wall hiding the brick wall, you'll understand Matrix Resurrections. How about in 2022, we don't normalize uh, Schrodinger's dead body. It literally is Schrodinger's dead body until you go and uh, poke him and ask him if he's okay. <laughs> Every year in major cities, hundreds of uh, dead bodies left until, well, for 12 hours, for 24 hours, for a week, until someone pokes him, goes, oh, he was sleeping. Schrodinger's dead body litters every major city, and people call me the crazy one for noticing. Here's another one, a slightly more animated Schrodinger's corpse. Entrance to Greg's the baker. The gentleman stood next to him is the security guard, and uh, we'll zoom in, and you'll see the normalization of, uh, of this sort of thing. I just had a chuckle, a self chuckle, a wholesome chuckle to myself. You know, like you go into a shop, shops everywhere, and uh, they're like, Excuse me, sir, have you got your face mask? Blah, blah, blah. You know, we should expand this kind of like um, authoritarian, like, you know, overstepping the mark to every other company. Like when you rent a car, say you're at the airport, you rent a car, the Hertz guy, the Six guy, the Europe car guy gives you the keys, and then he's watching as you drive out of the car park. And then if he notices you've not put your seatbelt on before you've driven out of the car rental place, he should literally press a button, go and block the gate and say, sir, I've disabled your engine remotely until you put your seatbelt on because it's my job as a corporate employee in our financial transaction to enforce government laws on you. Okay, uh, very interesting uh, result of surviving uh, the coof is that... Uh, I don't know. I look at people and um, I see a lot of Uncanny Valley issues. For those of you who are not into video games, don't know what Uncanny Valley is. It's an issue in video game development, especially in graphical representations of humans, is that as video game graphics get better, 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit, 64-bit, Xbox, PlayStation, yada, 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 as it gets better and better, and they try and make more and more realistic looking animated humans. The Uncanny Valley is the name we give to that 
feeling of anxiety we have in our souls when we see something that should be human is kind of moving like a human kind of looks like a human but we can just tell that thing is not a human being and I suffer a kind of um, computational uncanny valley or moral uncanny valley in that most people that I see, that I walk around, that I interact with, that I get annoyed by on public transport, in the city center, doing bad actions, bad habits. I get so angry, it's my problem, I'm not gonna pass it on to my viewers, but I get so mad at human beings who should be decent, moral, friendly, kind, altruistic, yet they act almost like chimpanzees, angry, bitter, you know, making the world worse. Ugh. Shiny, I'd rather be nice and shiny. Okay guys, we're in the northern quarter. Uh, the time is 11.11. Mr. Beardmore Barbershop, love it, love it. Uh, perfect time, 11.11, for a wide angle walk around. Uh, in the street that uh, we've not walked down very often on the Charles Beach channel. Um, when I, just very randomly, when I review my videos, I uh, often catch myself saying, well, why am I talking like that? And um, my children, they say, Dad, you have a YouTube voice. And I think it's, uh, I want to be understood. I want to speak clearly and uh, enunciate and, uh, you know, pronounce the words correctly. I also really enjoy when the automatic captions the uh, voice recognition that YouTube uses gives me very accurate subtitles. And um, is that Andy Warhol in the middle? Probably. Is that Basquiat? Basquiat! Basquiat! Basically, boys who do boys who do girls like their boys who do girls like their boys who do boys like their girls always should be Nikola Tesla as a dog. Oh yeah, and the last reason I, I speak really clearly and I pronounce my words succinctly is that I have a, a large international audience. For a lot of them, English is not the first language and uh, they should be able to enjoy the uh, Anglo videos I make without too much colloquial vernacular. I'm gonna cut soon guys, don't worry. We're gonna cut soon. And like, you know, there's uh, when I bump into other TV crews and I say, oh, what outfit are you guys with? They're like, oh, we're ITV. Or I bump into like v vloggers, vloggers with like half a million or a million subscribers and they look at me with my mobile phone and they say, oh, Charlie, why don't you get a... All right, Dale Street. And thanks, bus, that ruined my reveal. But anyway, screams coming out, oh my God. Look at the fusion of the old architecture with the modern architecture. There's a very, very um, neo-Gothic modernist feel to these long rusty bits of metal going up to the roof. No, don't zoom in that much. 20 times is a bit much, Charlie. Come down to two times. There you go. So do we think that will be better than 2021? Well, well, let's get a fucking rant on. In the words of the Oracle at Delphi, either King Leonidas will fall or Greece will fall. Now, in terms of lockdowns, itching for lock, itching, itching. Wales and Scotland already locked down. Yeah, fucking no New Year celebration for you. No Hogmanay because we took it away. Fucking control freak, fucking arseholes. So with Britain, with England, sorry, with England, with England, the main country in the Anglosphere, with England, either Boris Johnson will fall or the Tory party will be kicked out. Now what I mean by that is, if our dear master, Bojo, Bojo, who is, uh, is very badly viewed by the public now, they've done polls, Everyone hates the Bojo. He lost a very safe Tory seat. So either Boris Johnson will fall or the Tory party will fall and then Britain might fall. 
if they bring in a political lockdown, and it is political, the Optimus Prime variant is so transmissible, it's almost as if everyone has an Optimus Prime receptor. Next, please, before my video cut out, the Optimus Prime variant is so transmissible that it's as if it was inside all of us to begin with. Traffic warden, you're never more than five meters away from an authority figure in the UK or a, a camera. In fact, I'm about a meter and a half from a camera. Look. So everyone's going to get Optimus Prime. Everyone probably has Optimus Prime already coursing in their body. It's so transmissible. 32 mutations. It's not even that similar to the original <coughs> at Wuhan that was most probably accidentally leaked from a laboratory. I laugh so I don't cry, guys. And then that you do a quiet video, loud buses, but the camera's clever, it'll pick up my voice, it'll say you're doing a vlog. So if Boris Johnson does another lockdown, he's gonna, he's gonna lose his um, premiership. If the Tories um, agree with the um, control freak, Keir Starmer, Nicola Sturgeon, I don't know who the Welsh ones are. They're probably called Davy, Jonesy, Williams, something like that. They've only got like three or four surnames. Morgan, four surnames in uh, all of Wales. Morgan, Davy, Williams, Jonesy. So, and here's another thing. Look, Venom, look, they're rehashing old movies. There's no original thought anymore. It's all just rehashing. Again, graffiti. Like, look at this, just rehashing a woman's face. Is she about to remove her cyborg eyeball? I think so. Is she getting a contact lens out? Nah, she's removing her eyeball so that she can get into the minority report areas. Where am I going with this? What I'm going with this is, um, fuck lockdown. Fuck anyone that tries to say you can't live your life now. Optimus Prime is God's variant. I'll say that again. Optimus Prime is God's variant. Optimus Prime is God's vaccine. Before you get all excited, oh, he's a, he's a theist, he believes in God, he believes in fairy tales and Sky Daddy. It's just a fucking metaphor. It's just an archetype. It's just a word. It's just a hope. It's just an optimism of the Optimus Prime being God's vaccine. Ah. Cut. Yeah, what do you mean? Like, I've, got, I've had my fourth booster and I have zero side effects. Do you like my uh, stripy jumper? But as I say, that, that means it's working. It means it's working. Here's an old one. It says sad with an image of Trump. Five years ago may as well have been 500 years before Christ. So, out, out, you know, I can't even read reports or see videos about the coof that are more than three months old because it's out of date. Doesn't make any sense. It's not even the same virus anymore. Oh. So uh, recently I thought I was going to die. I'm not going to go into details. Maybe it was, uh, you know, health paranoia. Maybe it was uh, psychological classic paranoia. But I, I honestly, in the, in the last few days, there was a, a half hour period where I thought I was going to die. I always like to show a bit of architecture because I'm insecure. I don't feel that my face and my stories are enough to carry the video. So I always let you have a little look around whilst I'm ranting at you because why not? And Get this, yeah? So I, I thought, I, I honestly, honestly thought there's a good chance I'm about to die. And I was at peace. Not like, oh, look how hard I am. Look at what a bad... No, I'm not a badass. I'm a fucking coward. Something interesting. I'll, I'll look at that in a second down there. I'm a coward. Um, I'm weak. I don't have things that other men my age have. I'm a fucking coward. So, I'm not, I'm not blowing my own trumpet here. I'm not inflating my ego, but... When I thought I was going to die, I felt at peace because um, everyone around me that should know how much I love them and care about them and would sacrifice everything for them, they know that. I was at peace that I was going to die. And uh, as Confucius said, the man who, understand, who wake up in the morning understands the Tao in the afternoon can die happily in the evening. Here is Little Lever Street and this spot here was where I filmed. I got fired from the Skinny Magazine. And it did quite well. They tried the Skinny Magazine, it went bust. Ha ha ha, you can't breach the beach. Um, they tried to get the video banned because I named some of them in it. But YouTube said no. Absolutely fair enough. 
and a UPS deliver. Look at that, free plug for UPS. Fuck FedEx, fuck the Royal Mail, go with UPS. You're welcome. <laughs> anyway, what I was trying to do was to come around here. Do you know what we need, guys? We need 4K footage of pigeons eating a chocolate brownie. Okay, I get slightly better audio when I don't zoom zoom in too far, but uh, the two people proselytizing, you know, trying to get new adherents for their religion. They're from the uh, World Mission Society Church of God. Here's the, the head honcho. Now, their tactic is to show you a passage from the Bible where it says something like, God the mother, God the father, next thing you know, boom, they have a little old lady sat in South Korea saying she is God. And they believe it. Very strange. Has he noticed me now? Has he, has he looked over at his colleague? Yeah, my voice travels. The voice of righteous indignation travels. Now, this is the big problem with a three and a half thousand year old book such as the Tanakh, known as the Old Testament, or a two thousand year old book known as the New Testament. Sorry, did I say Old Testament the first time around? Yeah, Old Testament and New Testament. Thousands of years old, rehashed, rewritten, regurgitated by very clever people, probably great orators, great thinkers. And, you know, the way I see holy books, you know, the Jewish one, the Hindu one, the Christian one, holy books are kind of like... He's filming me, that's amazing. Holy books are kind of like the material of a comedian. Now, I don't mean to put down any holy book, but what I mean is, in a very literal sense, is that you've got passages, you run them past... Hey, Joseph, how are you? You run them past uh, the public. If the public react very emotionally, it stays in. If they don't react at all, it comes out. Here we go, we got camera wars. Hey, Joseph, you should forgive me. Are you a YouTuber now, Joseph? Are you gonna you're gonna report me to the, the the big people in South Korea? Anyway, how's God the Mother doing, dude? What's the problem? What's the problem, Joseph? What's the problem? Is there a problem? Anyway, just so that we know, I'm I'm two meters away from you. Relax, relax. I'll, I'll maintain two meters away from you. I'm not following you. I'm still two meters away. Oh, try, look, you can try very hard, but unless I touch you or get too close, Joseph, you've got nothing. Dude, you could, I could say, oh, please don't, please don't convince my friends that God is a mother, but you're, you're still going to do it. That you can repeat, please don't follow me all you want, but the camera does not lie. I am meters away from you. Hey, Joseph, do you know why I've come closer to you? I was filming from a distance. You came up to me filming. So don't start crying like a little girl saying, don't, don't, <laughs> please don't follow me. You're going to try and stitch me up, but you're going to fail because never have I got within two meters of you. You're a grown man. Hey, tell your camera how I had to push you when you came right in my face, Joseph. Tell the camera how you threatened me because you said I was harassing your ladies. You're crazy, Joseph. And may God have mercy on your heretical soul. Joseph, say something else other than please. Look, I'm now four meters away from you. I don't think whoever you show the video to is going to believe that you were in any danger from a YouTuber with 1,300 videos where I've never instigated violence with people. Anyway, look at the milk float. Here's a nice shot. Can you get me a toot toot? Have you got a tooter? Honk honk. Hey, thank you. Merry Christmas. Just in case it wasn't apparent, um, I was filming from 20, 30 meters away. He hears my voice from a distance, comes up to me filming. So I film back. And because in his small, you know, overclocked graphics card, uh, obsolete brain, he thinks, oh, if I say to him, please stop following me, I can stitch him up as harassment. It's all right, Joseph, we've both got videos of that. Go and, uh, go and worship the little old lady in uh, South Korea. You are God, you are God, yes, you are God.
May God have mercy on your souls, guys. Okay, I was wondering until uh, how long would it be before the first police van stopped in the cracky triangle? And it's 11.37, before midday. Okay, stage center. We have a, I assume, I could be wrong, but the church is Korean, so I'll assume the lady is Korean. Uh, we have another one here. Again, I could be wrong, but I would assume she's Korean. It's a Korean church. And there's a lady in the middle who I have no idea what nationality she is. But what is very interesting is how they react as if I've pulled out a 155 millimeter howitzer and started pointing it at their position. Surely if you believe what you're saying as the absolute truth, and I mean absolute truth, you would welcome the naysayers and say, come here naysayer, allow me to preach to you, allow me to convince you why you are wrong, but they never do.